Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a brake job on the 2014 Toyota Tundra. I'm gonna do brakes front and back. For this video, I am focusing on the rear brakes. I ordered parts from Amazon and they are a power stop. And I'll have a link for these parts in the description of the video. And I ordered the rotors and the pads for both the front and the back. I ordered the Extreme since I do pull trailers and pull RVs. In my current situation, I can feel some warpage in my rotors. I've had good experience with power stop brake pads in the past, plus they have good reviews. So let's get started. Some boots, some rubber boots came with the kit. So we'll find out where these jacked go. up with jack stands in place. Wheels blocked. Tools that you will need for the back brakes are 17 millimeter socket, a half inch drive impact gun if you have it. If not, get yourself a breaker bar and a cheater bar. You'll need a torque wrench. Let's get a little C-clamp. You'll need an eight millimeter open end, closed end wrench. Uh, get a little wire wheel. Lock tight. Caliper grease, brake cleaner. Get a little uh, tube and get a nice little pan to capture the brake fluid when you clean the brakes. All right, first up, take your wheel off. <laughs> we are due for some brakes. Pad was actually wearing into my uh, rotor here. So I'm videoing the passenger side rear because this is the worst. Wear indicators did not go off. I did not hear them. Unfortunately, we dug into our rotor. However, I wanted to change the rotors anyways when I was gonna do a brake job and I can feel wobble when I apply my brakes. Let's get started. Get your 17 millimeter socket and take this caliper off. All right, so let's get these caliper bolts off. You'll need a little bit of leverage. 17 millimeter socket. Watch your knuckles. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Oh, nice. And once you break them loose, they are hand, hand loose for the most part. These boots come with the kits and it's it's good because they twist and kind of tear a little bit. So let's get this thing off of here. I'm just gonna take these bolts slash sliders and I'm gonna put them in a container. Now I'm gonna take this caliper, just kind of pull it off and just lay it on the axle right there. For the time being, that's where she's gonna sit. Now I'm just gonna take these boots, short one goes on top, this one's a bit interesting. I'm going to, even though I've got a new one, I don't want to tear this one up. So let me get this one out. All right, it was just sitting in there just like that. It just poked it and I pulled and poked it. She came on out. So for this one, I can get my impact in there, which is nice and convenient. Do the same for the bottom one. Uh-oh, impact won't fit on the bottom. Gotta do it the old school way. So this side didn't take much effort. The other side was a bear. The breaker bar was sufficient for this side. Keep your hand on the bracket. Don't want to fall on your toe. And just pull the bracket out, lay it off to the side. All right, let's try this. The other side, I didn't have to do this. So I'm gonna, I have a soft punch. This is made of aluminum. Brass will work just fine too. I have my little mini sledge. clean this surface with the wire wheel. I'm going to clean in here with some brake cleaner. Got my bucket underneath there to catch the dirt. So while those are airing off, I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to clean these pins with brake cleaner as well. And just wipe them off. Once they're nice and clean, no gum or anything on them, just put them off to the side in a nice clean surface. Now 
Get your new rotor out of the kit. Oh, this one's marked rear passenger side. So make sure you got the right one on the correct position because these are the, uh, the grooved ones that help dissipate the heat the best. We're going to spray the inside surface down with brake cleaner. Wipe it with a clean towel. Place it in position. Now we will uh, spray the outside surface down with brake cleaner and do the same procedure. Get your clean towel and wipe it free of any oil. Use your eight millimeter wrench. Get, go to your caliper, crack loose this bleeder screw. All right, with the bleeder screw cracked loose, take leading tube, put it on the caliper, just like that. We're gonna compress it using old brake pads. Flip it inside out. And our C-clamp. With your C-clamp in place, bleeder hose in place, your catch container in place, just rotate it until she compresses all the way. Don't do it too fast. Good. That should be good. See how far it's compressed? And we caught the old brake fluid into a container. Now go ahead and uh, tighten that bleeder and remove your C-clamp. All right, so now take your bracket here, take the clips out and discard them because we have new clips with the kit. So now take this and clean it with some brake cleaner. Clean the insides too, where the uh, pins move in and out. Clean those with brake cleaner as well. Get yourself some red Loctite. Prepare the bolts with some red Loctite. The bolts to mount this bracket on a bracket. Secure it into place with with the original bracket cleaned. Loctite on the bolts. Torque these bolts down to 70 foot pounds. Torque wrench dialed into 70 foot pounds. Now I'm going to take the new rubber boots and I'm going to put those into place. So I'll be using caliper grease and I'm going to grease these boots down. And I'm also going to grease the, the pins down, uh, the caliper bolts that, that act as slider pins. And this boot from the other side, I found that if I lubricate the, the end here real good, she'll, uh, she'll slide in pretty, pretty good. Let's try it out. Go ahead and I'm going to put this boot into place by this technique. <laughs> I'm just kind of using this pin to help push it. I actually used a clean Allen wrench to push it on through. That worked out pretty well. Use a large enough one so you don't poke a hole into it. And the small one that's in the package, is a, there's a lip right there. Lubricate that just a little bit. Basically, it, it fit, fits fits right into there. We'll see if I can't do this one-handed. There we go. And now that's in position. Now they're both in position. So the brake pads came nicely packaged, and they also come with the clips. So let's go ahead and put these clips into place. There's actually two different clips. So you'll want this one, clean side, with a sharp edge towards towards the rotor.
just like that. Now do the same for the back side. Okay, with your new clips into place, take your pads and prepare those. As I get the same brake caliper grease. There's the sliding surface on those clips that we put in. That's a sliding surface as well as that, so I greased that up. Nice little grease layer on there. Same with that side. Nice little grease layer on there. And the fun part, I get a little bit sloppy and I just put a layer of grease like and we're ready to put it in. Do the top first, get the top started. So these new clips are really a pain in the rear. So with the new clips in there, when you put this pad in, nose it in like this first because there's, there's some clips, uh, pressure clips on this side where they hold tension. So if you, if you nose it in like this and then rotate it into place like that, that's how, what helped me uh, get this pad into place. You just nose it in, rotate it, and push. All right, with my pins uh, lubricated, my boots in place, my pads in place, time to put the caliper back on. So when you rotate this caliper back around, you wanna make sure that your hose is not kinked. So what I'll do is I'll start with one pin and then I'll do the other one. Take my first pin. Don't force it. Just get her started in there. Oh, you can't see very well. And then I get the threads started. All right, so we're good. Now I'm gonna do the bottom. Okay, once the pins are in place, I'll go ahead and snug them, snug them down. All right, double check these little boots, make sure nothing looks kinked or unusual. These look good. Get your torque wrench out. Dial your torque wrench down to 65 foot pounds. And there we go. Let's take a peek. This is right before I put my wheel back on. I'm just gonna extend the caliper so that it's nice and tight. Should be good. Okay, so my caliper is extended. It's nice and tight. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna break this bleeder. Not for, you know, just, just loosen it just a little bit. And let the, uh, the fluid come out. A nice stream. Okay. No air bubbles, no air bubbles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Okay, get my rag and just wipe it down. Okay, let's get the wheel back on. Uh, break in procedure. I didn't do this when I had used these pads before, but hey, I'm gonna give it a shot now. Can't, won't hurt anything. Before I forget, there's a nice little plug right here on the old rotors. Go ahead and pull that thing out of there. It just goes on the new one. Like that. Test drive complete. I performed the break-in procedure. So if, if this completes the job for you, go ahead and top off 
your brake reservoir with DOT 3 fluid. In this video I will not be because I have my front brakes to do, and so stay tuned to my next video. You'll see me perform the front brake replacement procedure. Okay, so that completes my brake job today. I performed front and back brakes. However, this video is focused on the rear brakes. For the rear brakes, we can see even including the consumables and, and the parts, we're paying $250 pretty much. For the front brakes, uh, a little over $350. Front and back, you can get the kit both together. You can get a cheaper price uh, with the consumables adjusted. You're gonna pay just under $650. All right, that's that. So, hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that like button. And if you like watching my other videos, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.